Hey, this is Mrs. Gooding. Welcome to iFlip for Math, MathCast Lesson 3-1, Multiplication Properties. Our quote today is by Thomas Edison, who said, Many of life's failures are people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. So don't give up on math this year. You are close to having great success. Learning goal today is identify and apply the multiplication properties. Our individual lesson learning goals are to know and understand the identity property of multiplication, the zero property of multiplication, the commutative property of multiplication, and the associative property of multiplication. I'm going to teach you how to identify those and apply them in problems. Also, remember that when you have parentheses around a set of numbers and an operation, it means that we perform that operation first. Here are our vocabulary terms for today. There's a lot of them. So I want you to go ahead and pause this, write them all down, and then turn it back on and I'm going to talk about some of them. Okay, the product and the factors should be pretty self-explanatory, but the four properties are new to us. The identity property is when you multiply any number by one, the product is that number. So when seven times one equals seven, you're multiplying 7 by 1, so the product is 7. I remember what the identity property is all about because I look at that capital I at the beginning of the word identity. It looks like a Roman numeral 1. That tells me that the identity property tells me the rule for multiplying numbers by 1. The next property is the zero property. This is when we multiply a number by 0, the product will always be 0. 7 times 0 equals 0. 432 times 0 equals 0. A million times 0 will equal 0. The associative property is a little bit trickier, just to remember. It means you can change the grouping of factors and the product will stay the same. Notice in those two sets of numbers on either side of the equal sign that the numbers are in the same order. The 3 comes first, the 5 is in the middle, and the 6 comes last but we've grouped them differently. We put our parentheses around different numbers. Look at that number in the middle, that five. The first time we multiply the five by the three. In the second set, we multiply the five by six. You want to use the grouping to help you multiply more easily, so whichever is easiest for you is what will work best. Not what's easiest for me to multiply or what's easiest for your friends to multiply, but what's easiest for you. If it's easier to multiply 3 times 5, which is 15, and then multiply 15 times 6 to get 90, then you would group them that way. If it were easier for you to multiply 5 times 6 and get 30, and then multiply 30 times 3 and get 90, then that's the way that you should group them. You want to use the property to make it easier for you. I remember this because in the word associative is the word associate. And as friends, we have people that we associate with. So sometimes if I'm in the five in the middle, I might want to associate with my friend three because it's easier that day. Another time I might want to associate with my friend six. You may want to draw a picture of you with two friends on either side of you. That may help you remember that associative property is who you're going to associate your number with, whether it's the number on the left or the number on the right. In the commutative property, you can change the order of the factors and the product will stay the same. In that example, it says 4 times 8 equals 8 times 4. It doesn't matter what order you write them, you're going to get the same product. It would be the same if you multiplied three digits together and you wanted to move, change the order of those three digits to make it easier to multiply. I remember commutative property because it has the word commute in it. Your parents may commute to work. That means they move from one place to another. In the same way, we would move our numbers. Now here's a silly way that I remember it, and I wouldn't do this in front of other teachers, so this is our secret. In my head, when I'm saying commutative, I literally say commutative. So anytime I hear commutative, I think commutative, meaning I'm going to move those numbers around. You might draw a car next to this word because that would remind you that you could move your numbers. As we work the following example, I want you to remember these things. The multiplication properties are always used to make multiplication easier. 
we would never change or use a property to make a problem easier that was already really easy to do. If it's already easy, we can just do it like it is. If we can use a property to make it easier though, we would want to use that property. We also may use more than one property at a time to solve a problem, and I'm gonna show you an example of that right now. Here's an, the original expression, two times 63 times 50. And we have the parentheses around 2 times 63 to show that we would multiply those together first. Here's the problem though. I might could multiply 2 times 63 together in my head, but then taking the product of that and multiplying it by 50 is not easy for me. So, hmm, I wonder if I can use some of the properties to make that easier. Do you see any numbers in that equation, in that expression, that would be easier for you to multiply using mental math. Yeah, use the commutative property. Move those numbers around. Notice in step one, the order of the number is two times 63 times 50. In step two, the order of the numbers is 63 times two times 50. I moved them around because I want to make it easier to multiply. Watch what I do next. That's right, I'm gonna use the associative property to change the grouping of my factors. So instead of having the parentheses around 63 times two, I've made my parentheses around the two times 50 because two times 50 is 100 and it's easy to multiply 63 times the multiple of 100. So now I'm going to multiply. I multiplied 2 times 50 and wrote that below, 100. Then I took all of the numbers outside of my parentheses and brought those directly down, 63 times 100. Now I can use mental math to multiply them, and it'll be super easy. My answer is 6,300, so 63 times 100 is 6,300. I'm also going to show you a quick strategy to multiply those numbers together, just to make using your properties easier. You'll learn this very well tomorrow night, but for tonight, we're just going to go over it quickly. This is a mental math strategy that will make multiplication a lot easier for you. I'm going to underline all of the digits that are not zeros, so all of the non-zero digits. 63, six and three are not zeros, and one is not a zero, so all of the digits that I underlined have value. These two zeros don't have value. Now I'm going to multiply the underlying digits together. 63 times 1 is 63. Now I count how many zeros I have in both of the factors. There are no zeros in this factor, but there are two zeros in this factor. So I add two zeros after the 63. 63 times 100 equals 6,300. That was super easy, huh? Now we're going to practice identifying the properties. So in your journal, you're going to write down the multiplication property used in each of the following equations. Number one, here's an equation. What multiplication property did we use to make this true? Go ahead, pause, and then push play when you have it written in your journal. Remember, you can go back to your vocabulary definitions if you can't remember the names of all the properties. Did you write associative property? Let's look. In the sets of numbers on both sides of the equal sign, the numbers are in the same order. The first number is five, the middle number is 40, and the last number is nine. We didn't change the order of the numbers at all, but we did group them differently. On the left of the equal sign, we grouped 40 times nine. Maybe that's easier to multiply first. In the, on the right side of the equal sign, we grouped five times 40. They, they equal the same thing, we just grouped them differently. So remember, the associative property is who that 40 hangs around. Is he going to hang around with the five or is he going to hang around with the nine? Let's try another one. Number two, one times 94 equals 94 times one. Write down the property and then push play when you're ready. 
Did you write identity property? Did you remember that any time you multiply a number by one, it's going to equal that number? That's the identity property. Let's try another one. Number three, four times 32 times eight equals 32 times eight times four. Hmm, what multipli multiplication property was used here? Pause it and push play when you're ready. Did you write commutative property? Did you hear me? In my head, I was saying commove to remind me that this is the property where I can move the numbers around to make multiplication easier. On the left side of the equal sign, we wrote four times 32 times eight. But on the right side, we totally moved them around and wrote 32 times eight times four. That's the commutative property. Here's our last one, number four. 831 times zero equals zero. What property is this? Did you write zero property? I hope so. Anytime you multiply a number by zero, you get zero. That's the zero property. Now we're gonna do some practice with these. Use the properties to fill in the missing number. Number five, what number would go in that blank space to make that true? Go ahead, in your journal, write out the full number sentence, not just the number that goes in the blank space, but the full number sentence and then fill in the blank space with the correct number. Pause it and play when you're ready. Did you write zero? This was the zero property. Even though 452 times 32 has a pretty big product, if you multiply it by zero, you're going to get zero. Here's another one, number six. Write that entire number sentence in your journal and fill in the blank space with the number that would go there. Did you write eight? Look at both of those sets of numbers on either side of the equal sign. We didn't change the order, this is the associative property. Three times 42 times eight is going to equal three times 42 times eight. Eight is the only number that can go in that blank space to make that true, that it's equal to the number on the left, the set on the left. Number seven. Hmm, 4,031 times what equals 4,031? Write it down in your journal and push play when you're ready. Did you write one? This is the identity property. Anytime you multiply a number by one, you get the same number. I think you're ready for a challenge now. So here it is. One group of adults goes to a movie. There are 73 people in the group. They each pay $56 for the movie. One group of children also goes to the movie. There are 56 children in the group. They each pay $73 for the movie. Does the price the group of adults pays for movie tickets equal the price the group of children pays for movie tickets? In your journal, I want you to solve that and explain how you got your answer in your journal also. Describe the multiplication properties you use to get your answer. Good luck and come in tomorrow to check your work in class. Finishing up, go back and review those properties if you're having trouble with them. Remember, I went over them pretty carefully in the vocabulary section. We also did some practice with them and you may wanna practice again. In your journal also, write down if you think you're at a one, a two, or a three level in your learning. Remember, one means you just don't get what we're talking about and you need to come in and get some help tomorrow. A two means you get it most of the time, but you might still be making some mistakes. Maybe you're only having trouble telling the commutative and the associative properties apart. We can work on that tomorrow too. A three means you've got it, you're getting the problems correct, and you're ready to move on. Write down any questions you have. Fantastic, you have finished lesson 3-1, multiplication properties. See you later.